uh, really, as a member of United States Marine Corps Special Section, I have to sort of give that a mention first, which was an organization that was started in kind of late 1953 when President Eisenhower signed a secret executive order into action, uh, mandating their creation, uh, signing the United States Marine Corps Special Section Special Code into law so that it would be able to deal specifically with ET issues because the notion that all these other branches and intelligence groups were going to be parceling out or doing things, Eisenhower could see where some of the people in that wanted to go with that and he really wanted to try and create uh, an organization that had ethical oaths uh, to a system of constitutional order that he felt might keep it more in line with the legal authority, seeing what the dangers were for uh, all of this turning illegal. I mean, you know, his, his farewell speech of trying to warn everybody against the military industrial complex. The Mars Defense Force, excuse me, the Mars Defense Force is a private military contractor who is contracted by the Mars Colony Corporation. So wow. the MCC is, is sort of this financial organizational arm and the MDF is not directly owned or commanded by the MCC. They, they are contracted, but, but they have to be made up of some of these other military contractors, which are still make up the EDF and Naval Space Command and these other military agencies. So it becomes managed as a private military or organization, which is, means it's infused with a lot of corporate management. But yes. you still have a hierarchy of soldiers and officers who are contracted and coming right out of these other direct military programs in order to run that uh, private military organization because they've definitely learned the mistake of letting private industry individuals actually get their hands in the military part. That's a very, very bad thing to let happen and you still always want to have the military folks running the military programs whenever you can. Uh, but the, you know that still means that the corporate people get their fingers in everything as far as what tools are being approved or used or policies are being approved or used and but I will say that the military commanders you know have a certain amount of ability to put their foot down and say no 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 this is garbage and I can tell you a number of times when my uh, commanding officer at Forward Station Zebra um, no, several issues really just said no 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 this is stupid we are not doing it this way anymore this is harming uh, my effectiveness of my soldiers this is harming the, our day-to-day -day morale this is harming our ability to function this is harming our ability to perform in the field and so I will not be doing it that way we will doing it be doing it this way or else and seeing you know essentially the MCC have to capitulate to military command when military command says you know absolutely not we will not be doing that that way yeah, two, so two, two. It's, 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 a, it's a back and forth it's a back and forth power. Okay. two questions would it be right to say that at, at a point Dick Cheney was probably in charge of that particular arm. Uh, Dickie Cheney is almost assuredly involved at somewhere in these uh, areas and it was exactly what level he would have been involved in the MDF uh, or the Earth Defense Force. I, I couldn't say specifically, but I would almost be certain that his thumbprints and his fingerprints would be all over it somewhere. And my understanding is that, yeah, Mar Mars is in no way a cohesive, you know, unified, one, you know, planetary government species, you know, kind of a situation at all, that there are definitely multiple uh, species and folks involved, you know, natives and non-natives, people, natives maybe who went away and are coming back and, and different ways that you can look at that. But yeah, my understanding, there's at least a half a dozen or so uh, different uh, genetically distinct species that uh, possess and compete and compete for a certain amount of territory. But I want to emphasize again when people want to talk about that competing for territory, that they often assume that there's this fight for global dominance on Mars by these species, and nothing could be farther from the truth. Because a long time ago, it was simply determined that that was not going to be militarily or financially practical at all, uh, and that you were simply going to have to settle for main maintaining your territory and, you know, trying to keep anybody else from taking too much or pushing into too many have a direction over your own territory. But the notion of any one of those species dominating all of the rest and being able to, to own that planet is simply a joke. It's just a joke. The idea that it could happen is ridiculous. 
And yeah, I mean, my, my understanding is some are more friendly and on better terms than others, and some are obviously more hostile. I, I can only speak really clearly about what happened near the sort of northern polar regions where I was at involving our stations, these northern tribe, uh, rep, raptor, uh, reptiles, tribes, and the mantid tribe uh, species the, the, that we dealt the, with. The raptor ones aren't they the ones that are associated with the, the United States Navy? Is that right? Um, is it the Air Force or the Navy that have connections with them? I, the Navy definitely does. I don't think I'd be authorized to comment on that because I don't know enough about it. And if I would be saying something that would harm anything in a secure way, I wouldn't know that necessarily either. So I'd be best not to say anything specifically other than that, yeah, the, the Navy is certainly... Uh, Naval Space Command and United States Marine Corps Special Section, I know, still has diplomats uh, constantly communicating with the that's, that's, Pride Raptors. Yeah. That yeah. was my understanding. That's brilliant. Randy's, again, is absolutely correct that the, 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 the parts of Mars, as other planets are, which are segmented off, your own operational field is defined. Um, the, the reptilian grouping is finds it very hard to play within the rules uh, and, and will attempt both physically and non-physically to expand its influence the whole of the, the the whole of this prison planet is draconis reptilian created in terms of its systems and its structures which then those humans who are so desperate to climb the ladder to be something uh, are embraced and uh, are part of it um, and sometimes it's willing and sometimes it's not willing. In most cases, they are mind controlled, um, bloodline families. It's uh, a very, very interesting, if horrific, uh, control network and control system. But, you know, uh, from a dispassionate point of view, I have to say it's very effective. And the mantids are incredibly spiritual in some ways and incredibly ancient and learned. And I've got so much going on that they, they're not that worried. But the reptiles are very much into expansion of territory, dominating species, controlling people. Randy, you, you mentioned that there were six major species on Mars. At least, that, that I'm aware of. Okay, yeah. I, I assume that three of those are reptile, mantid, human. Is that correct? Um, I mean, we have terrestrial humans, you know, from Earth. We also have Martian humans, I mean, who are from Mars, you know, sort of hominids that are from Mars. Right. Uh, and then there's, um, I mean, there. I know Andrews described them as sort of a small, you know, type, almost gray or zeta type being. I, I'm not sure what to call them, because uh, I don't, I mean, he came up with some, some names, some Latin variation names, which is fine, uh, but I'm not sure what, uh, how they're defined in the manual, because... Because to me, they, they, they fit a description of drone being, and so in the list of various drone beings, it's not always about what species they are because they're drone beings. They're like biological robots, and so they can sort of essentially be operated or teleoperated uh, or programmed by a number of other species as proxy who don't want to either engage in the environment, the biological environment. They're set, they, they know they're vulnerable to mold, spores, fungi, and so forth in the environment. They don't want to wear the bio suits. The gravity or the pressure is too uh, different for them to survive in, so they'll use a biological drone uh, to teleoperate uh, in that area, and so my understanding is that they, they, they may not even be their own like biological species, they're just sort of like biological robots, so who they're actually being operated by or teleoperated by, I can't say, and therefore I wouldn't define them as an actual species, I would more define them as a biological drone or a biological robot. And, and so I'd, I'd say there's at least those species we had, you know, a, a draconian infiltration that we pretty much extracted as together as a group effort. You know, we all got together and sort of, you know, ganged up on the draconians when they thought they were going to come in and play divide and conquer. Uh, but and, and I would just only imagine from what I know that there's got to be a couple of other hangers on somewhere, you know, sort of in that map, even though I'm not privy to the entire map of the entire globe of Mars. But I'd say... From my intelligence sources, we got that be you know half a dozen or seven or eight species, which you know have territory that puts them in a position of having to be negotiated with. If you're talking about global affairs, if you're talking about Martian global affairs or things that affect everybody, I mean, 
even if they're all fighting each other, there has to be some sort of loose diplomatic organization around what's acceptable and not acceptable for everyone. Um, there is a high council within the, um, the Mantis, and it runs on a traffic light system, red, yellow, and green. Some, somewhat like the uh, weapons that some of the humans have, um, I don't know, laser rifles, but we're talking energy hand weapons that some of the uh, human uh, troops carry. But anyway, the High Council, like any council, has a vote except being telepathic. Um, the telepathy is uh, counted by votes, but not by raising your hand. Well, we, 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 we know of Cyrus A and Cyrus B <clears throat> and the... Right. The star systems and it was predominantly from these star systems that what I would refer to as higher humans colonized Mars a very long time ago and it was these higher humans that then interacted on Earth and that's the, the connection with the human line and um, these creatures are the creatures that brought the Sphinx uh, the technology for the Great Pyramid and that is why you see very similar structures on Mars um, where certain aspects are being um, celebrated. And that's, that goes back much, much longer than many people understand. At least hundreds of thousands of years to my understanding. <coughs> yes, yeah. yes, I agree with that. Um, I, I, I think the future is, is exciting. Um, Mars was decimated by a nuclear type explosion and in fact even today if you had a basic Boy Scout equipment you would detect the radiation spikes in some parts of Mars and that's where some parts of Mars are off, off limits and, and Randy will know that. Um, but Mars does have some very interesting minerals, some very interesting metals um, which um, do take the attention of uh, certain species. The other thing is that Mars is a very handy base for skipping across to the moon and it's a very interesting detecting point for craft coming into locality within within the earth so mars has a strategic value not just an economic value and randy will know that yeah for sure uh, the moon the moon um also but then the moon the moon its creation is somewhat different from mars your moon because your moon is a command center for this region of the galaxy not just the solar system that's that's small potatoes from an historical perspective could you share with us what the origin and circumstances were of the nuclear explosion that that uh, what, what, did such what, what? damage to mars May I ask you why you're asking that question, Alfred, please? Uh, number one, as an exopolitical historian, I have profound interest. Uh, number two, from a cautionary standpoint for Earth. Right. It was a suicide, I'm not going to go into huge detail, it was a suicide mission to take out a particular base it was a, a mission from which the inhabitants of the <clears throat> weapon knew they would never return. It was effective, and it was over effective. It uh, ripped off the atmosphere. <clears throat> a lot of the water that was on Mars ended up on Earth. A lot of the, 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 the life organisms was put on Earth. That's why we've got stuff from Mars on our, our planet. Um, and it damn near destroyed this planet as well. But that wasn't the intention. Um, so it was a, a military operation to take out uh, a base which was too successful. And uh, approximately, what, what was the date of that? Do you mind if I don't if I don't tell you that? Oh, okay. That? No, no, that's fine. Uh, can Can you give any details as to the? nature of the military operation that is who, who against yes, who, or who I don't think that's a problem um, <clears throat> I, if anybody's ever watched any of my presentations <coughs> I know I upset people when I talk about Palladians being quite warlike um, if you if you 
listen to YouTube videos. Everybody wants to be a Palladian because they're the good guys. <laughs> um, nobody wants to be a reptilian, by the way. Right, uh, right, right. And what I what I would say is that uh, that the Palladians give as good as they get. They are actually incredibly warlike. Doesn't mean they're not good people, mm -hmm. but they are very warlike. And this was a Palladian uh, suicide mission. Uh, to take out their arch enemies who had a base um, and it was rather too effective <laughs> okay I see and and there was no uh, 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 and I and I take it that there are no interplanetary judicial authorities that took umbrage to that sometimes somebody tips the balance in one way how do you bring that balance back you have two ways to bring the balance back you either do it diplomatically or you do it militarily if you cannot bring it back diplomatically then a military solution is found the diplomat failed the military solution went in and that's what happened so in actual fact the universe agreed with that action because everything else had been tried and failed and this was the last point to create it a physical happening because you know what the universe knows if you let something or someone get away with something they just keep on pushing and pushing and pushing and that's what happened now what would I'll just push with with a couple of questions. Was that event part of what what one would call the Lucifer Rebellion? No. No. Okay. So this, this was just plain kind of turf war against. This by, is by between. This is between a higher human group and a reptilian group who really don't like each other. I see. And um, and it was just the base. It was not that is there were other humans on that planet. Right. Well, if if you find Palladian human beings with Palladian souls, with, there are plenty of them on the planet. If they are in connection with themselves, they are absolutely full of karma, and that's why many Palladians are um, chewed up inside, because in order to to carry out that mission, that on behalf of that whole race, they did kill a large number of, um, what do you call them, non-combatants. Yeah. yeah. And the Palladian race has a massive amount of karma because of that one incident. Right. And, that's why, and that's why Palladians, as a large number, have been incarnating on planet Earth to attempt to undo that karma. Although, for most people, they don't remember why they're doing it. Right. And it's not only a large number of people, but also a Gaia, a, a living planetary organism, was destroyed. A, a, yes. It was ecocide. Yes. So these are all violations, I assume, of galactic and universal norms that exist and are enforced variously by galactic governance. Uh, yes, but Rand, Randy, Randy knows that in order to save the millions, you sometimes have to kill the thousands. Right. And that was the decision taken. Uh, you see, Alfred, you're looking at it from a lawyer's perspective. Randy will look at it from a military perspective. And so it is very interesting, your two takes on it. Well, no, I, I'm looking at it from, from Mars' perspective. I think Mars took a beating, and look at poor Mars. It was killed. Well, let's see what Randy has to say, because I'd be interested. Um, well, I mean, it wasn't killed. It was, it was, you know, beaten within an inch of its life uh, and, and left in the gutter to die. But, I mean, it didn't die. It, it survived. Um, and, and it... I mean, to the point of causing a huge, 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 huge amount of reflection uh, amongst the indigenous folks who live there and, and their ways to say, maybe we made this happen because we just couldn't stop fighting. And oh. so it, there, there was a huge change uh, in perce perception and attitude 
uh, so that the majority opinion of the raptors on Mars is take care of Mars. They really have no concern uh, about trying to fix the rest of the galaxy, trying to get in anybody else's business. They have no interest in conquest. I mean, I, I have to agree with Simon that the reptilian brain tends to want to be warlike and, con and conquesting, and the draconians certainly have this very reptilian, reptilian brain. But I would also argue that there are, it's very possible for raptors and reptiles to evolve. Uh, and to get to a point where they can go, you know, maybe that's not the best way to do things. And I, I can I can know of three reptile species that I can think of right off the top of my head who all share sort of an evolved attitude about uh, aggression where they had to learn from some experiences way back in their history that if you just keep doing that, it's going to end you in a very, very bad, awkward place. So the native raptors now on Mars tend to have one of two uh, ways of doing things, which is to either keep fighting amongst themselves as a way of trying to cleanse and purify themselves. Believe it or not, they continue to see that continuing to fight amongst each other is a way of purging and cleansing this uh, this thing from themselves because they, they one of the things that they do anymore is they refuse to use advanced technology when they fight each other, except when they're absolutely forced to. So when I talk about you know, being confronted by, you know, um, phalanxes of, of reptiles carrying savage weapons and people are like, well, why didn't they have plasma guns? And I'm like, because they don't believe in them. It's not really their way of doing things. They don't think that they're bettering themselves by engaging in combat uh, in a dishonorable way. And they feel that it's better to go into battle and die with honor than to, you know, stab somebody in the back and win. So part of what they feel like they're going through karmically is this cleansing process, which is very violent and very aggressive and, you know, is very, very fighting amongst themselves, you know, like, you know, we kind of bashed each other in through the 13, 14, and 1500s, you know, large groups of people coming together and beating each other with blunt objects in order to sort of, you know, work out issues. Uh, and that's kind of where they feel like they're at. The, now, the, our experience with the northern tribes is they also have the sort of attitude of, you know, fighting through honor and honor through fighting, but they also have a very evolved attitude about their consciousness and their relationship with the planet so that they feel very, very connected to the consciousness of their planet and basically feel like their entire goal right now is to keep connecting with the consciousness of their planet, to heal their planet, terraform the planet back when they can you know, restore vegetation and, and water across the surface of the planet and have healed the planet, then they can feel like they did their job, which is, we broke it, we have to fix it. So it, it doesn't matter how long it takes us. If it takes us 10,000 years, 20,000 years, 50,000 years, it doesn't matter. You know, we're going to tear off all our advanced equipment and put our computers down and we're going to get out our shovels and our hose and we're going to fix it. So it's a very honorable attitude. Um, but I wouldn't necessarily say that that means that you should just walk up to any one of them and go, hey, have a hug, because chances are you're going to get eaten. You know, it, uh, raptors and reptiles are just not, they're not fuzzy. You know, you don't just, uh, you don't just walk up to them and, and say hi. Really, to be honest, if you want to say, if you want to greet a group of reptiles, you have to come into the group. You have to stand there and do this sort of like Maori thing, like, you know, I'm standing in my space and then, you know, spit on the ground and challenge one of them. And then one of them come and you'll have like this wrestling match. And if you can fare, then they'll consider yourself worthy to actually then say hi to. But if you can't fight and prove yourself worthy, you're a snack. You know, I'm very interested in what Rand is saying there because um, I'm aware that there is a group that do not use um, energy weapons. Um, and would you refer to this group as the scimitar group, Randy? Um, say that again, refer to them as the what now? Would you refer to them as the scimitar group, the group that used curved swords? Yes, yes, yes. But that was ma mainly the tribes that we dealt with and, and faced in combat and that I personally got to communicate with experience eventually. Yeah, absolutely. That would be them. Yes. No, thank you. That, that's great. Thank yeah. you. Yeah. Um, and no, I, but I, I would just add to all of that that I think that the changing in consciousness uh, is part of what they're going through for their own reasons because of what happened to them and they have some very different attitudes about how to work through that and but they would very much like to see you know earthlings and terrestrial you know Martians get back together and sort of communicating and and being friendly again at that point 
the, argue, the, the discussion changed from, you know, we have to fight with these humans because there are, are, you know, invaders to we have to help the small children humans who don't understand who they are and we have to help them grow up and understand themselves. So my question is this. Their plan is to kind of exploit Mars, exploit Earth, and have a, 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 an uber uh, prison planet on both kind of an elite theme park on both and transfer their elite, you know, depopulate de, 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 de the, the useless uh, eaters on Earth, bring over the elite meat to greet and have them repopulate the, and become surface dwellers on Earth. It seems that that's not occurring because we've shifted over to a positive timeline with unity consciousness coming. What I heard you saying both of you gentlemen was that was the good news and that is that both earth and mars are being liberated and at some point we will have a unit a public unification of the colonies of earth and mars on earth now we, we have kind of a public society on but the public society on earth is it, the the colonies the human earthling colonization of Mars is being hidden because it's being run by the Cheney, the Dick Cheney and, and, and the Skull and Bones machine and the Illuminati machine. That is being shredded by the positive timeline and unity consciousness. So basically that ascension is something that a number of species actually want to happen. The people who don't want to happen it are a large group of Draconis reptilians who want to keep the status quo and their subservient grouping who run some elements of the planet. Now they're the ones that want to maintain the situation but the majority now want this advancing change. And finally there are other uh, alien entities from a higher frequencies, so beyond the fourth dimension, who are now throwing out the rule book and are interfering uh, to try and bring a level playing field. So they're not coming in to win the war for the human race, because that's not allowed, but they are balancing it out to make it easier for the good guys to get to the top. Um, let, let me just take it to another notch. Many, many hundreds of thousands of years ago, many millions of years ago, it was well known that the human race would at some point ascend, and I'm using the word. Now, when a entire species advances, it creates the most enormous amount of energy. I see. Now, other creatures who are trapped in a pit and can no longer escape from that because they've lost the ability to be spiritual, could get on the back of that and ascend with that. But because the way the universe is, because the way source or God, however you want to look at it, there are certain rules that everybody has to play by. And one of those is that you cannot ascend on the back of another race unless you have moved towards a good position You've moved far enough across. So, beings like the mantids, who are actually trapped just as much as the humans are in their own position, would like to advance with that. The Draconis are undecided because they are so stuck in their world of ceremony and ritual and I am God and I will kill and eat who I want. But there are some of them who are saying, we're finished. We've had it. We are going, we're in a cul-de-sac. Here is a way to see if we can work with humans and see if we can get out of this mess. So the ascension process is well known and has been divined or predicted for a very long time. Much longer than the Mayan calendar, much longer before that. Every race on every planet in the whole multiverse goes through this process, Alfred. Every sentient living creature will advance. How else do you get to the fourth frequency, the fifth, the sixth, the seventh, the eighth? If you survive and you change, you move up the ladder because you develop. You have 
Randy's right. There's something very important going on, and slowly but surely, the um, the off-worlders or the bad guys on the planet are losing control, not just of the populace, but they're losing control in many cases with their, within their own organization. There are a large number of people who are saying, you know what, I don't want this anymore. I can't live with myself. I can't live with this. Um, and I want some, And I want out. Now, as you go higher up the chain of command, this is not necessarily in the corporations, but I do believe it's in the, the pure military, um, where these people believe themselves to be custodians of the peace of the planet. That's how they see themselves, as custodians of the peace of the planet. Because when you are aware that it isn't a war with Russia that's going to cause you serious problems, it is the potential war with races from other worlds. When you know that, everything else becomes much less important. And so you begin to realise that they've had enough, that humanity has been lied to. This is such a big story, and surely human race can move on and develop. It's time to grow up. And so you have a number of people in very high office, military office, and a few politicians who have come together quite secretively, forming their own groups within groups within groups, trying to move it across. And you might get a, a major or a colonel in a military unit who will somewhat change the orders that he's been given. And that's what's occurring. And that's where I think we need to place our faith. Right, right. Um, well, you know, talking of, 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 of Earth and Mars, there is some research, and you, you gentlemen can, can confirm it perhaps more than I, that suggests that prior to 9500 BC or some date of a solar system catastrophe, Earth and Mars were openly an interplanetary society. Uh, you know, you can see ruins of uh, un under the rulership of the predecessors of the Egyptian pharaohs. You see all sorts of Egyptian art on the surface of Mars. Uh, and, and we've seen that through the efforts of Andy Bashago, who's headed up the Mars Anomaly Research Society uh, uh, curatorship of the NASA rover photo showing uh, uh, sarcophagi that have uh, the carved statue of what looks like a an, an Egyptian king that that is with a conical head headdress like the Nefertiti conical headdress to hide the quote cone head effect, um, and so. Some people say that there was a solar system catastrophe that led to the to the uh, ecological effects of the current surface of Mars that led to the destruction of our maritime civilization on Earth. That was the end of the of the um, openly interplanetary society of Earth and Mars, and that that sort of started up again. Uh, around 1900 with uh, the Martians signaling Tesla and one thing led to another, J.P. Morgan functioned, uh, furnished him. Uh, the, the, the Illuminati um, working through Skull and Bones, my alma mater Yale was the second chapter of the Bavarian Illuminati founded in 1776. And their mission was to reestablish the colonies on Mars, which has led, you see, uh, Dick Cheney was a year ahead of me at Yale and flunked out his sophomore year, but he got into the non-Yale skull and bones. And so this, this was all the, this all comes from the Bavarian e Illuminati, which is reestablishing the old, pre-solar system catastrophe, Earth-Mars uh, interplanetary society, which you've experienced as a Earth-Mars Defense Force and the Mars Colony Corporation. It's a bunch of Yaleys in secret societies. There was a, oh, yeah. 
I was in an above ground called Torch and Talon, which Skull and Bones infiltrated, and they shut me down on my night, which is how I kind of felt it. I've always been kind of the insider whistleblower on that realm, and so that's why I'm blowing the whistle on, on Dick Cheney tonight. <laughs> Listen to what I'm saying. Every PhD on this planet, whether they're for science or for medicine, have been given incorrect information for thousands of years about the history of this, not just this galaxy, the universe. They have been given information which was controlled by Draco, Reptitian, and other extraterrestrials not to know what was really going on. So every book in every university on this planet had misinformation sure. about every field, every technical field you can come up with. Uh, we're going to have to step back our thinking here to the people on this planet. Okay. They don't know there's extraterrestrials. Yeah. They don't know that there's not just one of them. Maybe we've got thousands. Maybe we've got billions of extraterrestrial. The latest number, just recently, uh, we doubled the number again. We now have 200 trillion galaxies out there. Mm -hmm. And to say that we're the only intelligent people in this universe is naive. Now notice the eyes are different, nose are different, but they do have five fingers, five toes, uh, two eyes, uh, and uh, rather strangely enough, I asked him how they communicate. He says, well, it's like this, boy. You almost doesn't have a question in your mind. You walk into a room with, with one of them, and all of a sudden, you find yourself giving the answer to your question in your own voice. They're able to use your own voice by telepathy to talk to you. And I said, fine. Now, that's how they look front. But when you turn around and look at the back, it's like that. Again, not really understood by the public, okay? <laughs> yes, there are Federation facilities out in the galaxy where other extraterrestrials get together and uh, there's many different missions for many different types of programs. But we'll talk about one of them, which cruises the galaxy and it has as many as 30 different extraterrestrial civilization people on board. It looks like the moon, okay? But it's a planet. I mean, it's not a planet, it's a vehicle. But this is a, a radical change for the military to be actually bringing one of their own forward in this way. And I wonder if you're... Um, your enthusiasm is going to, is it going to be catching? Are there going to be others like you? This is what we're hoping will take place. That's what I'm hoping will take place. Because the public needs to know about this. The country needs to know about it. The planet needs to know about what has taken place. And we've been lied to. I say this over and over. We've all been lied to for a minimum of 6,000 years. Uh, every country, every European country, every Asian country. And somewhere, we're not being told the truth. We're being lied to at every turn and every corner. We're considered less than morons. Morons. Uh, so the government has uh, made itself an entity, an independent taxing body, an entity into itself. And does, isn't accountable to anybody, not even the so-called New 